Welcome back. Our economic recovery and um, growth plan of Nigeria's government has continued to uh, make the rounds. The plan expected to run for four years has um, three main objectives, including restoration of growth, which has been elusive, investment in the people, and becoming a globally competitive economy. And um, achieving all of these, many believe the private sector uh, has a role to play. And um, with me in the studio is the chairman, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, Mr. Boka Kiari. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Kiari. Thank you, Chimaze. Well, I believe, um, as the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit, I want to believe you are part of the working group that put together uh, this document we're seeing here. How much of input came from the private sector? Um, uh, the, the, there has been uh, a, a good deal of consultative um, consultation done. We started, I believe, with the NESG uh, and government interaction on this plan uh, since October last year. So there has been a lot of um, input from the point of view of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Uh, and there has also been at least a number of rounds of consultations done, both publicly as well as uh, privately, that the government had engaged in. Okay, now, looking at the final uh, document, are you satisfied with what you have seen? I mean, the contribution made by... NESG as a group, you know, are you satisfied with what you have seen? Um, let me say this. Um, one, the document came out only two days ago. So um, I, 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 I went to sleep reading uh, through the document two nights ago and I haven't gotten back to it yet. Um, how, however, we have actually mandated the secretariat of the NESG to uh, go through and come out with certain things for the board to consider. Having said that, and now stating it from my own personal viewpoint, so this has nothing to do with NESG, uh, from what I have seen, um, personally speaking, it's not punchy enough. By that I mean it's not earth shattering. Uh, it's more or less uh, what I would look at and consider uh, a slight extension of the MTF plan. Uh, there are some key differences that I see that would make it exciting from the point of view of the private sector. I think among the 12 or so uh, either principles or key or key priorities, um, number, number two was private sector to drive the economic growth and development of the country. And this is a government that initially, according to a lot of pundits, uh, had been considered to be cynical about the private sector. And for it to actually embrace the private sector, it means that we are seeing a reality uh, hitting uh, the administration. The second thing is that there are some key things. Um, it talked about macroeconomic stability. Uh, if you are considering macroeconomic stability, then you have to have an alignment between your uh, fiscal, monetary, and trade policies. We do not have that today. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, some of us have been calling for it. Personally speaking, I've been calling for flotation of the currency. And these are some of the things that need to be done urgently so that foreign uh, investments need to flow in, or rather, uh, flow can happen both ways. Even exports, where people's export proceeds do not disappear, they would rather be happily be repatriated back into the economy. So all of those are things that are uh, silently addressed in the, uh, in the document, or uh, maybe because I haven't gone farther into uh, uh, the document itself. Now, uh, Mr. Kerry, you and I know that um, government, of course, this is not the first time we're seeing this kind of a thing. We've had yes. the needs, we've had the seven points agenda of Vision 2020, they are all programs. Now, one would wonder what makes this different, what strategy is in place to actually um, ensure proper implementation of this plan? Um, I think that, that is silent. 
uh, there is no uh, what you might call um, money implementation or the execution and the monitoring of the execution meaning that uh, we should set ourselves some KPIs and sometimes uh, timelines uh, meaning here in three months from now we have to do a check six months from now we have to do a check nine months from now we have to do a check so those check marks and what are expected and what kind of outcomes are expected from not just the economy but from all the segments of the economy that have been highlighted in the document need to be uh, s clearly spelt out now so that we all can hold our government responsible in the execution of the plan document that has been released. I, I think that is lacking at the moment. Now what is the role, what role would uh, NESG as a group play in ensuring this implementation? We, we have engaged uh, the presidency and also the National Assembly in many aspects of the key things that happen. We have, remember the NESG always has this scorecard, uh, which is something that not many governments like, uh, yeah. because we hold the mirror to your face and say that you promised us this, and here are where they are. Here is where we want to be, or where you say we should be, and here is where we are. And we need to, you know, pay urgent attention to these specific areas. Of course, where the government had reached its milestones or goals or objectives, we clearly state that. We give the commendation. Where we see we are lagging, we need to uh, intensify the efforts and the execution of those in those aspects so that proper... Uh, proper growth uh, of the economy uh, happens. Now, just before I let you go, Mr. Uh, Kiari, with this plan, the federal government, of course, hopes to achieve about 7% growth by 2020. How achievable is this? Do you see this feasible? Uh, it's a tough call. 7% um, growth is something that if all engines are on fire, if we do certain things, we could clearly articulate it. Not with the current scheme of things. You have to do certain things. You have to be creative. We have to think outside of the box. Um, those sort of things, are the details of those sort of things are lacking in the document. Uh, but I do believe that this is a listening government, and I do very strongly believe that this government, if we give them the right help and support, they would be able to listen and take it and run with it. All right. Thank you very much um, for your time. It's good having you in the studio. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, I was just talking to Mr. Boka Kiari. He is the chairman of Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Well, it's on that note that we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimeve Obi. Welcome.